Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leet Code called Find Minimum in Rotated Sorted Array. It's a medium. We're going to jump right into it. Suppose an array of length n sorted in ascending order is rotated between 1 and n times. For example, the array num 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 might become 4, 5, 6, 7, 0, 1, 2 if it's rotated 4 times or 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, it goes back to where it was if it's rotated all 7 times through. Notice that rotating an array one time results in the array being a of n minus 1, a of 0, all the way to a of n minus 2. Basically what happens is everything gets shifted over by 1 and we wrap around. Given the sorted rotated array nums of unique elements, return the minimum element of this array. You must write an algorithm that runs in O of a log n time. So we're given a sorted array that's been rotated an X number of times. X can be anywhere from one to N. And we wanna output the minimum in log of N time. Example one, we have three, four, five, one, two as our input nums. So here the original array was actually one, two, three, four, five. And this was rotated three times over. But here we output one as our minimum. Example two, we have four, five, six, seven, zero, one, two. This was the original array rotated four times and the minimum is zero. Example three, 11, 13, 15, 17, rotated four times to end up exactly where it was and the minimum is 11. We have some constraints over here. All of the integers of nums are unique and nums is sorted and rotated between one and n times. So we are given an array that is sorted but also rotated and we want to find the minimum in log of n time. Now if this was a simply sorted array, we can find anything using binary search using log of n time. But this is rotated and we still want to find something in log of n time, which means we know we still want to make use of binary search somehow. And if you want a refresher on binary search, I've linked that down below, so go give that a quick watch. But back to this problem, how are we going to do this? Before doing anything like always, let's just take a look at a few examples. So I have the following example here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I want to find the minimum in my input nums. Of course, just looking at it, we know it's 0, but if it was a bigger input nums, how would we find it? One way to do it is, of course, just to scan through every single number but that would take O of N time. And we want to do this in log of N time. So we want to do some sort of binary search here. We actually see that all of the numbers are perfectly ordered. This is a good increasing sorted array. So of course the minimum is going to lie on the very left, but say it was rotated differently. How would that look like? And I'm actually going to write down all the possible rotations. And these are the indices of those elements. So this is rotated all the way through. How would we find the minimum in any of these arrays? Well, if we want to do a binary search, let's think about how we do that, right? We split the array down the middle and we check which half we want to look in. So if we were to do that, right, this would be our midpoint over here at index two. And we would want to know where to look in, where the minimum would lie. If this was a perfectly sorted array, the first index would be less than the middle one and the middle index would be less than the end one. And of course, none of those cases would hold true for the rest of these numbers over here because right off the bat, we see that the left is not less than the right for any of the other cases. And that makes sense because the only case that would hold for is that very first sorted one because otherwise it wraps around. So we're gonna see three, four, and then zero, one, two, three, or two, three, four, one, two, three, four, zero, one, two, three, four. In all these other cases, we always see left being greater than the right. But how does this compare to the middle as well, right? If we see three, which is our middle, this is greater than our end. So we know this is not increasing anymore, which means that we've actually hit the highest point and then restarted at some point in this half. If we see the middle greater than our end, that means we've hit the high point and then restarted. So our minimum is going to lie in this half over here. 
If that's not the case, if the middle is not greater than the end, then it's going to lie in this half over here. So this is one, this is not greater than three, which means the minimum is going to be over here because if it's not greater than three, this is a perfectly increasing part of the array. And we wrap around and we somehow restart on this end. So that's what we're going to do, right? And let's also check this with our even cases. So if we have zero, one, two, three as our input and i'm going to write all these rotations for this as well so these are all the rotations for our even sized nums and why do we want to check the even size as well because when we do a mid right equivalent to beginning plus end integer dividing that by two so if my beginning pointer is over here and my end is over here so this is just representing the half of the array that we're looking at so Right now we're looking at the whole one because we haven't really split and gone further. This means that my index is zero and three. So zero plus three is three. Integer dividing that by two is one. So my midpoint is actually over here. So now when I see which half I want to check in, I would compare my middle and see how it holds up against my end. So middle is less than my end, which means my minimum is going to lie in this half here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my end to now be my middle. So I'm going to check again over here and I see that I'm on index zero and one. So one integer divided by two is zero. So my middle is the same as my beginning over here. They both lie on three and I want to see how it compares against the end. Middle is greater than my end, which means it's going to lie on this half that the end is in. So I'm going to change my beginning to be after middle. So now beginning and end are pointing at the same number zero and we can see that we found our minimum. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep halving up until our beginning equals our end. So to write this out, we're gonna have beginning and end starting on the opposite ends of our input. So beginning zero and end is length of nums minus one. While beginning is less than end, while they're not at the same index, we want to continue halving and going down. What we're going to do is find our midpoint. So mid is going to be over here like this. And now we want to see how it compares to the end. So if nums of middle is greater than nums of end, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my beginning to be after our middle. So beginning is going to equal middle plus one. This is because the middle is greater than my end. So I have to look in this half. I want to look for the minimum and it can't be at middle. It has to be after middle because it's already greater than my end. We want to look for a smaller number, right? So I'm going to set it to be middle plus one. Else, if that's not the case, so if our middle is not greater than end, it is less than our end and that means it lies in this half over here our minimum so i'm going to change end to equal our middle and in the end all i have to do is return either beginning or end it doesn't matter and we just want to return the number so i'm going to be returning nums of end so let's go ahead and run this code It's accepted and now we can go ahead and submit. And it is accepted as well. Now before leaving, let's just run through all of this line by line to really make sure we understand what's happening and then quickly try to implement this recursively as well. Okay, so I have this example over here. We're gonna reuse example one and we're gonna set beginning to zero and end to length of nums minus one. So beginning is going to be zero and end is going to be four. And I'm just going to write this out over here. So we know what bounds we're looking for our minimum within. So these are our bounds right now. We have our beginning and end and we calculate our midpoint as well. So mid right now is going to be four divided by two, which is two. So our middle is over here. And now we are going in this if condition, right? If nums of mid, so that's five, is greater than nums of end, and that is true, we're going to put beginning to be middle plus one. So beginning is now going to be at three. 
So we're gonna change this to B3. So now beginning is no longer going to be here. It's going to be over here at this one. So this is what beginning looks like. And we go back into our while loop. So beginning is still less than end. What is our middle now? Beginning plus end is seven integer, dividing that by two, we get three. So our middle is the same as our beginning. So both are at one and end is at two. So if nums of middle is greater than nums of end, that's not true. So we are in this else and we move end to be middle as well, because this is the half that we want to look for our minimum in. So now end is three as well. We are back in here. Beginning is no longer less than end. And we would return nums of end, which is one. And this is the minimum in our array. And that's exactly what we expect. And you notice how we didn't actually go through every single number in this array because we're not doing this O of n time. This is going to be log of n time. Now, before leaving, let's actually quickly try to write this recursively just so we know how both work. Now, if we want to write this out recursively, we're going to take the same logic we wrote iteratively. And instead of putting this in a loop, we're just going to put this in a recursive call. So the first thing I'm going to do is move this out. We're going to reference this to build up our logic, but I'm going to be writing out a helper function called find, and I'm going to be passing in beginning, end, and nums. For my base case, what I'm going to do is check what I did for the iterative solution, right? What we did is we continued while beginning was less than end. So if I want to stop, I want to stop when this no longer holds true. So if end is less than equal to beginning, I would return. So I'm going to be returning nums of end, right? That's what we did over here. So that's what I'm going to do up here. And for our recursive case, I'm going to be making the same check. So I'm going to have a mid mid calculations like this, and I'm going to check if our nums of middle is greater than nums of end. What I'm going to do is call this function again, self.find with my beginning equaling middle plus one. So for the beginning, I'm passing in mid plus one and stays as is, as does nums. If that's not true, then I will be returning self.find. And of course, I want a return over here as well of my end being adjusted. So my new end is going to be middle and my beginning will stay as is. So it's going to be beginning and middle and then nums. And that is basically it. That's all we need to write for our find function. It's just taking care of all of this logic. Now for this part over here, that's how we are going to call our function over here. So I'm going to do return solve.find with beginning being zero and being length of nums minus one and nums as my input. So this is just how to rewrite something iteratively, specifically a binary search recursively. So if we go ahead and run this code, it's accepted and we can go ahead and submit this as well. And it is accepted as well. And if we want to just really understand this, if we run through a quick example with this as well, and feel free to stop this video if you don't want to continue. But what we're going to do is quickly run through this just to make sure we understand how everything is working. So for this example, right, I have my input nums and I'm calling find min with this. What I'm doing now is calling my helper. So I'm calling self.find with my beginning being zero, my end being length of nums minus one. So that's going to be four. And I'm passing in nums as is. So I'm passing in nums to be this input array. Now I'm making a check in my find function. If end is less than equal to beginning, I would return nums of end. That's not true. So now what I do is I calculate my middle. So that's going to be two. And if nums of middle greater than nums of end. So nums of middle is five that is greater than nums of end, right? So end was four and middle is two. These are my indices and the values there are two and five. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be returning this call. So I'm making a call with self.find middle plus one. So I'm passing in three and end is still four and I'm passing in the same nums over here. Now I'll be making the same check over here. If end is less than equal to beginning, I would return nums of end, that is not true. So now I calculate middle again. So middle is 
Now, 3 plus 4, which is 7, integer dividing that by 2, we get 3. If nums of mid is greater than nums of end, so nums of mid is 0, 1, 2, 3. Nums of mid is here, and nums of end is 2. That's not true. The middle is not greater than our end. So now we make this call over here. So we are going to be returning with beginning being beginning. So that's going to be 3. And now our end is going to be our middle. So that is going to be 3. And nums is still the same. And we are back into this function again. End is less than equal to beginning. So what we're going to do is return nums of end. So 0, 1, 2, 3. At index 3, we have our minimum, which is 1. We basically did the same thing. We just did this with multiple recursive calls. So now we return 1 to our color. And this bubbles back up to our color. And we return 1 here as well. To finally return 1 for our original color. To then return 1 as our overall minimum. Okay, so we just went ahead and solved this both iteratively and recursively. If you this in log of n time, all it is is a binary search with just a caveat checking which half to look in based on how the middle point compares to any of our ends. If you have any questions with anything whatsoever, let me know down below or let me know if you like this video and subscribe if you want to support the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next video.